Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Kathy. I'm glad you called. Now, you'll have to count me out tonight, Angel. I've got to see a man about a gambling debt. Mm Mm-hmm. Some boy I know tried to make a seven the hard way and discovered murder was a natural. Once again, the transcribed Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves the case of the natural seven. It is late evening in New York. And at Frenchy Devlin's, a gambling house in the East 70s, a young man named Steve Richards is conducting an interesting experiment. Steve's trying to get a pair of ivory cubes to come up the right way. Come on, Dice. Don't be good to pop. All I want is one little natural. Eight is the point. Eight. Get your bets down, gentlemen. Get your bets down. All right, point let's is make eight. it the hard way. Two little Coming fours out. will do it. Six and a three. A six and a three. The point is still eight. Place your bets. Eight from the cage. Come on, Dice. Now show them. Seven a loser. Stay in the line. Well, I guess this isn't your night, Mr. Richards. Who's next? Next. Wait, better, a, wait a minute. What about one more roll? Huh? Have to wait your turn. Uh, it's okay with me, Nick. Let him shoot. Thanks, fella. I tell you what I'll do. I'll roll you one time for five thousand. Oh, what do you say? Sorry, Mister Richards. There's a five hundred dollar limit at this table. But you got to give me a chance to get even. Come on, no. What you don't seem to understand is that I just work here. I don't make the rules. Well, where's the boss? Well, he was here just a. Oh, uh, Mister Devlin. Mister Devlin. What's the trouble, Nick? There's no trouble. This gentleman would like to see you. What kind of a place do you call us anyway? I thought this was supposed to be a gambling house. Well? Well, where's your sport and blood? Nick tells me I can't bet more than five hundred dollars. That's not rich enough for your blood? No, I want to shoot 5,000. One roll? Yeah. Well, that raises a peculiar point, Mr. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't believe I caught your name. It's Richards, Steve Richards. All right, Mr. Richards, you're faded. Uh, give him the die, Snack. Well, I, uh, I take it back, Frenchie. You're a sport. Thanks. Come on, Dice. Be good to Papa just one time. Four is the point. All right, little Joe. Let's do it. Seven a loser. Satisfied now, Mr. Richards? Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm satisfied. I think you need a drink. No, I'm all right. I insist. (laughs) After all, you're my guest. But I tell you, I don't need... Just follow me. Are you a native of New York? Yeah. I don't believe I ever saw you at the club before. Now, this was my first trip. I do hope it won't be your last. I'll write in here. Now for that drink. Oh, please don't bother. I, I never touch the stuff. I suppose you don't smoke either. No, no, I don't. Model young man. How wonderful. Oh, uh, do you have your own check or would you like a blank? Huh? In case you've forgotten, you just lost $5,000 to me. Naturally, I assumed we were playing for cash. Look, Frenchie, there's, uh, there's something I gotta tell you. You don't have the money. No. Well, that's very embarrassing. I don't know what possessed me. I thought if I won, maybe. But you didn't. Well, those are the fortunes of war. So you must appreciate my position. If I lost, you would have expected to collect. I'm not trying to excuse myself. Well, you needn't worry, Steve. I may call you Steve. I'll take your IOU, payable in ten days. My IOU? Yes. I've got an idea you make good. Well, I'm afraid I can't. I haven't got a prospect in the world. Still, I think you'll pay off. Want to bet? (laughs) Mm-hmm. I got a gun that says I'm right. Forty-six left. Thirty-two right. Twenty-four left. And it should do it. Who's there? I said, who's there? You better come out from behind that safe. All right, mister, get him up. What? You heard me. Get him up. 
Wait a minute. I'm not waiting for anything. I raised them before I plugged you. I know you from someplace. You're out of your mind. Still, I'd like a look at you without that mask. I bet you would. Now, you're going to raise your hand. Steve Richards, isn't it? What? Sure, I thought I recognized your voice. Now, have you gone crazy, Steve? You're the one who's crazy. Who's this Richards guy, anyway? A man who works for me. Well, I never heard of him. Then how'd you know the combination of the safe? You've been in this racket as long as I have, Morgan. How did you know my name was Morgan? Well, I can read, can I? It's on a door. It won't wash, Steve. Now, look. If you're in trouble... Just get back. I mean it. If you're in a jam, I'll help you. Now, but don't be a fool. You'll never get away with this. I'd like to see someone stop me. I know it's you, Look, Steve. I ain't gonna argue with you. You're just plain screwy. Well, there's one way to find out. Oh, oh. Mr. Morgan. Mr. Morgan, I didn't mean it. I swear I didn't. You gotta believe me. You gotta. <laughs> Who's there? Who's there? Well, can you come back later? I'm afraid not. All right. All right, just a second. Hello, Steve. Hello. You remember Nicky Zale? Sure he does. What do you guys want? It uh, probably slipped your mind, but I hold your IOU for 5000 By an odd coincidence, it's due today. Well, I can't make it good. I'm surprised to hear that, Steve. Especially after what I read in the papers this morning. I don't know what you're talking about. Don't you work for Alfred Morgan? Yeah. Well, it seems he played host to a masked burglar last night and got shot for his pain. Well, what's that got to do with me? Well, I was just putting two and two together... Now, if you were the thief... I wasn't. I'm merely assuming. But if you were, then of course you'd have my money. I wasn't a burglar. I think you were. Did Morgan say so? No. He claims he didn't recognize the man, but I've got a hunch he's lying. Why should he? To protect you. A form of noblesse oblige. Well, you're wrong. Why are your bags packed? Well, I, uh... I was just going away on a little vacation. At a time when Mr. Morgan needs you most? That's not nice, All Steve. right, all right, Frenchie, I'll tell you the truth. That'd be a welcome change. I was the burglar, but I didn't take a dime. After I shot Morgan, I beat it. Well, that wasn't very bright. As long as the damage was done... I tell you, I didn't take a penny. I think you're lying. But I don't care what you think. Well, perhaps not, but Nick does. All right, Nick. Come on, punk. Where's the dough? <laughs> Where is it? Let me alone. I'll let you alone. I'm going to get that dough if I have to break every bone in your body. And frankly, fella, that's just the way I'd like it. All right, Steve. Take a slug of this. Huh? Go on, go on. It's good for what ails you. Who are you? Mike Waring. Wait, you're Mike Waring? I'm a private detective. You know the one they call a fork? Want to bet? What are you doing here? Al Morgan sent me around. Morgan? Yes, you plugged him last night. Oh, I didn't. Now, cut it out, Steve. He recognized you. you know what, I guess I might as well admit it. You might as well. I suppose you come to arrest me, huh? No, Morgan doesn't want that. He figures you wouldn't have tried to tap the safe unless you were in a jam. You mean... Mm -hmm. He's not going to prosecute. <laughs> Talk about turning the other cheek. I'll make it up to him. I swear, Mr. Waring, if it's the last thing I do... No, never mind the promises. What happened here? I was beaten up. That I can see for myself. Who did it? Frenchy Devlin. I'll kill him for this. Don't talk like a fool. What prompted Frenchy? Huh? He must have had a reason. I gave him an IOU. Oh, so that's why you tried your hand at safe cracking. Huh? I must have been crazy. I won't argue the point. Well, what are you going to do? Well, Morgan's willing to forgive and forget. Let's see if I can prevail upon Frenchy Devlin to do likewise. Yes? Hello, Mrs. Devlin. 
Do I know you? No, I don't think so. My name is Mike Waring. Well, how did you know I was Mrs. Devlin? I'm a detective. I beg your pardon? Well, I came up here to see Frenchie, and you opened the door, so I made a suitable deduction. Oh, remarkable. No, no, elementary. May I come in? Please do. Where's your husband? Out. Let me take your coat. But you said Frenchie wasn't home. That's why I'd like to see you comfortable. Aren't you a friend of his? No, not particularly. As a matter of fact, I can't stand the guy. Uh, 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 careful, Mr. Ware. You must remember I'm his wife. Well, I don't imagine you work too hard at it. Oh, but I do. Can I get you a drink? No, thanks. Just tell Frenchy to lay off Steve Richards if he knows what's good for him. Pardon? He'll understand. Oh, you're not leaving. Oh, but I am. Why not leave your card? If Frenchy doesn't get back to you, maybe I will. It's only me, June. Oh. You sound disappointed. Maybe I am. You don't want to talk that way, darling. You give people wrong ideas. I give Father a kiss. Will you stop pawing me? You're not that fussy with other people. Hmm? Why discriminate against me? What are you hinting at? You must think I'm blind. Well, I'm not lover. I know what's going on. You're crazy. Come here, baby. I want to show you something. Frenchie, I'm warning you. Stay away from me. Or uh, you'll do what? I mean it. Stay away from me. Frenchie! Uh. Frenchie! And now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Two hours have passed since Frenchie Devlin was murdered. And now at police headquarters, the distraught widow pours out her version of the affair in the sympathetic ears of Sergeant Corbett. Uh, now, now, Mrs. Devlin, I know how you feel, but you, you, you've got to be brave. I'll try. That's the ticket. Oh, Sergeant, you're so understanding. I never dreamed a policeman could be so nice. Well... <laughs> Well, we, we're not the monsters people think. <laughs> now, is there anything else you can tell me? No, no, it all happened so quickly. Frenchie had just walked in. He didn't even have time to take off his coat when the killer fired. Did you get a look at him? Just a peek. He seemed to be about your size. Well, was he stocky or thin? I couldn't say for sure. Well, now, you're not giving us much to go on. Well, if you're going to press me, I'd say it was thin. <laughs> Oh, can I think of poor Frenchie? Now, 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 Mrs. Devlin. I'm sorry. Uh, would you happen to know if your husband had any enemies? Oh, no. No, everybody loved him. He... Well? I almost forgot. A man was around today and threatened him. Who? No, wait a minute. I think I've got his card in my purse. Yes. Mike Waring. Do you know him? Yes, very well. All right, Mrs. Devlin, you go on home. I'd like to escort you, mm -hmm. but I have a call to make. Just a second. Hello, Mike. Hello, Sergeant Corbett. Yeah, long time no see. Uh, must be at least two weeks. <laughs> uh, what brings you to this neck of the woods? This. Oh, that looks like one of my business cards. It is. You remember handing any out today? No. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah, I gave one to June Devlin to pass on to her husband. Was there a threat attached? What are you getting at? Well, brace yourself for a shock, kiddo. Frenchie was murdered. Once more? Well, you heard me the first time. He was gunned at 4.30 this afternoon. Who did it? That's the question of the day. What gave with you two? Oh, it's a long story. Well, that's okay. I got loads of time. All right, hold on to your hat, because it gets a little involved. You know Al Morgan? Oh, the guy who was gunned by a burglar last night? Mm-hmm. Well, Morgan's a friend of mine. 
The boy who shot him was Steve Richards. Hey, look, if you've been holding out on no, me... No, don't go off half-cocked. There's nothing else I could do. Morgan won't prosecute. Why not? Because Steve works for him. Seems the kid was in a jam. He needed money. Well, who doesn't? Where does Frenchy fit into this? Now, Steve owed Frenchy the dough on a gambling debt. When the kid couldn't pay off, Frenchy and Nick Zale took it out of his hide. So you went over to ask Frenchy to lay off. Mm-hmm. That's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, personally, I thought it was kind of dull. No, that's because you're too close to the picture. What's this Steve Richards look like? <laughs> it's pretty hard to say. His own mother wouldn't know him after the workout Frenchy and Nick gave him. See about my size? Why? Because Mrs. Devlin got a fast look at the killer. According to her, he was about five foot nine and on the thin side. Does that fit Steve Richards? Fits a million people. Yeah, Mike, but we don't have a million suspects. Now let's go see what this one has to say about it. Mike, I don't know anything about it. It's all Greek to me. You sure you haven't budged from this room since I saw you? No. I don't believe it. That's all right, Sergeant. I don't blame you. I behaved like a first-class jerk. Well, you certainly have. And wouldn't I be a fool to jeopardize everything after Morgan gave me another chance? How did you wind up in Frenchy's club in the first place? Then don't tell me you needed money for your mother's operation. No, it's even more obvious than that. I, I thought I could get something for nothing, so I pulled out every dime I had in the bank and tried my luck. It wasn't very good. Well, I guess I'm the kind of guy who has to learn the hard way. Yeah. Well, Mr. Waring, where do we go from here? Oh, I don't know about you, Sergeant, but uh, I've got an idea. I'll let you know how I make out. Hello, Mrs. Devlin. Well, if it isn't the bad penny. Mm-hmm. Come in. I understand I'm indebted to you. How so? Didn't you give my card to Sergeant Corbett? I thought you might like some publicity. No, not me. I'm the modest type. Corbett tells me you uh, saw the man who killed your husband. Well, not exactly. Well, you got a close enough look so you'd recognize him if you saw him again. I think so. Mm-hmm. Would you mind describing how it happened? I told the sergeant. Well, now, tell me. Well... Frenchy had just come in. He was going over to the bar to pour himself a drink. Mm -hmm. Just then, the door behind him opened. Where were you during all this? Sitting right there on the sofa. (laughs) You're lying, Angel. (laughs) What? I said you're lying. Look at the layout of this room. Well? Well, Your sofa's right next to the door. And the way the door is hinged, if you were sitting where you claim, you couldn't possibly see anyone behind it. You're crazy. If you'd like me to demonstrate? If I did, I wouldn't have you work on the door. Look, Mrs. Devlin. June. The police suspect my client of killing your husband. Your client? Yes, Steve Richards. So? So Steve's allergic to chairs, particularly those wired for sound. It's my job to keep him out of it. For which you get paid? That's right. If I'm not too personal, what are your rates? I get $100 a day plus expenses. Oh, that's no money for a man like you. Suppose I could triple it. What would I have to do to earn it? Just, um, keep me company. Or wouldn't I be in the way when your other friends came to call? What other friends? <laughs> oh, angel gal like you must have millions. How about Nicky Zale? What? Well, with Nick working for Frenchie, it would have been so convenient. How dare you? It's oh. <laughs> a mighty... Nice right you've got now, there. get out. All right, Angel. And I'll be back. I never could resist strong women. Hello? Nick, is that you? Yeah? June. You got rocks in your head? What's the idea of calling me up? Now, hang up. Nick, I've got to see you. I told you to hang up. This wire may be tapped. Look, you don't understand. Mike Waring was just here. He doesn't believe that story I gave the police. What he thinks doesn't bother me. Well, he knows about you. Who told him? I don't know. He must have guessed. You don't guess about things like that. Nick, you shouldn't have killed him. What did you say? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. I don't like that kind of talk. Oh, look, I apologize, didn't I? What are you going to do about wearing? You've simply got to All right, some... June, I got the message. Now relax. I'll give it my immediate attention. Hey, 
Buddy. Buddy. Me? Yeah. Trouble you for a match? Yeah, sure, I got one. Well, but isn't Nicky Zale? Small world, ain't it? Uh, too small. I want to talk to you. Sure, let's go to my place. Why bother? I got a car parked in the alley. Oh, I hate talking in cars. You don't have much choice. You see what I mean? I see. All right, forward march. Well, I bet you've been talking to June Devlin. Never mind who I've been talking to. It's pretty dull you got there, Nick. Of course, when I say you got, I use the term loosely. Shut up. Well, don't tell me you trust her. You got to keep that mouth shut. Yeah, sure. Well, what now? Try that blue Nash. You're going to drive. I hope it's got hydromatic. Don't be funny. I didn't mean to be. Get behind the wheel. Yes, sir. Now start her up in no funny business. Okay, now head for the George Washington Bridge. I know a nice quiet spot on the other side. Hey, you're pretty low on gas. What are you worried about? You won't have to walk back. Get going. <laughs> to the adventures of the Falcon. Thirty-five minutes have passed since Nick Zale offered to take Mike Waring for a ride. And now, five miles beyond the George Washington Bridge. All right, Waring, slow down. Pull into that side road there. Okay, any place along here will be fine. All right, get out. What for? This is so cozy. You're going to get out? Okay, Nick. I suppose you join me. Let go. Let go or I'll shoot. No, you don't. Oh, you nasty man. Ah, drop it. So you want to play rough? Huh? Yeah. Let me alone. Yeah, I'll let you alone. Not so tough without that gun, are you? All right, now get back in the car. This time you drive. You're going to take me for another ride, and I guarantee you'll like this even less. It's all well and good, Mike, but you heard what the man claims. He says he just wanted to talk to you. That's all. Well, so you had to drive me clear to Jersey? And... The air there is better for my sinuses. Look, Sergeant, I tell you, he killed Frenchy Devlin. Where's his motive? I can give you a dozen. Number one, with Frenchy out of the way, he could take over the club. Not to mention Frenchy's widow. You're crazy. How do you think you'd look without those teeth? <clears throat> I hate to spoil your fun, Mike, but there's one thing wrong with your theory. Frenchy was gunned at 4.30. So? So at 4.15, Nick was down here renewing his license to carry a gun. Are you sure that? Positive. Now, you tell me how one man can be in two places at the same time. Now, wait a minute, Sergeant. I think I see how it could be managed. How? I'll need a guinea pig to demonstrate. Luckily, I know where I can find one. Want to come along and watch... Come. Hello, Steve. Hi. Uh, you remember Sergeant Corbett? Yeah, sure. How do you feel? Well, much better, thanks. Well, we got it all locked up. Good. No, it's not as good as all that. We're going to need your help, Steve. Well, I'll do anything I can. All right, here's the problem. I asked under Nick Zale as Frenchy's murderer, but unfortunately, he has a cast iron alibi. How's that? Well, it seems Frenchy was killed at half past four, and at 4.15, Nick was down at police headquarters. Now, it would take him at least 40 minutes to get from there to Frenchy's apartment, so, uh, well, you see the problem that creates. Well, sure, how can one man be in two places at the same time? That's just what I asked. Yeah, well, I finally thought of the answer. What? He can't be. So that means we have to look to someone else. What do you mean? I'm afraid you're elected, Steve. What? You killed Frenchy. So you got it all figured out, huh? I think so. The only reason I passed you by originally was because it seemed too obvious. Well, I figured on that. Uh-huh. Well, you were wrong. Eventually, we had to come back to you. Yeah, but there's one thing you didn't figure out. Hey, watch it, Mike. He's got a gun. There's nothing to worry about, Sergeant. I noticed it the first time I was here, so I removed the shell. Well, you no well, good. Well, I couldn't afford to have you hurt yourself. Dirty double cross. All right, let's have it, Steve. Thanks. Well, so this is the little gimmick. Uh, what the dove? It's loaded. Uh-huh. But you said you emptied it. Well, I guess I can't be trusted. 
But you can't be trusted either, so that makes us even. Stephen, take care of him, Sergeant. He's all yours. You got enough there, or would you like a refill? No, 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 this is fine, Mike. Well, I'm glad you're happy, Corbett. After all, this party is on you. Yeah. On me? Well, didn't I make you look like a big man? Yeah, you made me look like a first-class mo. Huh? I said right at the beginning that Steve Richards was our boy. Oh, yes, but you never could have made it stick without my help. I like that. I got a good mind. <laughs> Don't flatter yourself. You've got no mind at all. Look, if I could talk you out of Steve as a suspect, what do you think a lawyer would have done? <laughs> When Steve pulled that gun, that was the one piece of evidence you needed. But you never would have gotten it without my badgering him. Yeah, what gets me is his motive. After all, he only met Frenchie twice. Yeah, but that second meeting was a butte. So he decided to get even. Well, I don't know. Now, what's the matter, Sergeant? Haven't you ever been so sore at someone you felt you could kill him right then and there? Steve never learned to stifle his impulse. Come to think of it, you're right. Yeah, there's one character I run across occasionally, and every time I do, I get a mad desire to throttle him. Who's that? You. <laughs> I better leave before I give way to the impulse. Hey, waiter, give him the check. <laughs> Good night, Mike. Would you like a shout out? Leave a comment in the section below. Tell me who you want to shout out to, who you want to shout out from, and we'll get it up here for you. Hey, we want to say thanks for tuning in. Please like and subscribe so you don't miss any. You got a lot more of these up there. Go check them out under the playlist. Leave us a comment. Tell us what you want to see, what you think, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>